Good morning. Pleased to see everyone with us this morning. Peace and love to you from, the, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to First Baptist Church this morning on this glorious day. Happy day. Happy Father's Day. If this is a day that we all lay aside to commemorate the fathers, not only for bringing us into this world, but for leading us and guiding us to, to make us successful to, that the way we are today. So we give them honor for that. But it's also every day that we, we celebrate our Heavenly Father who gives us the, the reason to be here today. But at any rate, uh, I would like to start this morning by reading a card from the Kreiner family. I am very ble- a very blessed woman to be a member of First Baptist Church of Hope Mills. The outpouring of love and support has been appreciated. I could not have asked for more during Charlie's illness and passing. The constant check-ins from members and Pastor Harrison were, were ongoing reminders of the love of Christ. The meals that you provided after Charlie's passing were helpful during our time of grief. With gratitude, the Kreiner family. This morning I'd like to read from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up to in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Also from, from Psalms 103, verse 13. As a father has compassion of his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And now, Pastor Harrison will open us with prayer. Good morning. morning. Man, I'm loud, ain't I? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. We want to welcome all of our visitors, and especially Evelyn. You and the family are here in honor of Charles. We appreciate your presence, and I know that he, looking down, he he appreciates you being here. So just let us know we're here for you, and we thank you, every one of you, for coming. I also want to give a shout out to all the daddies out there, whether you've been a good dad or a bad dad, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm preferring to <laughs> the good dads, and I just want to say to those fathers out there this morning that many of you are trying. We live in a real challenging world today, and you are doing all you can to be a good father, and it's not easy. There are no perfect fathers, like there's no perfect mother perfect wife, perfect husband. So all I can say to you today, keep at it. Don't give up. Your child needs you. And sometimes they're a grown child, okay? (laughs) They need you. So stay in their lives and be an influence. And if you made mistakes, they will forgive you, okay? So keep that, Father. I send those kudos out to you this morning. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Almighty God, <clears throat> the day is the day that the Lord has made, and the scripture tells us, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Sometimes we find it very difficult to rejoice in our pain and our sorrows and our hurts, but yet you tell us to exercise joy, to practice joy under every circumstance that comes in our life. We ask you, Lord, your blessings upon our nation, our leaders, We especially want to remember the men and women who are deployed and those that are deployed across the seas and those in harm's way who are are fighting for our freedom, who are engaged in the battle that night and day. They leave behind their families, their children, their grandparents, their parents. Lord, we ask you to be with them and sustain them with your grace and your mercy. Be with our religious leaders, our chaplains, and other faith group to inspire, to encourage our soldiers and, 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 and our airmen and our military forces of all branches to be the best they can be in honor in, this, in, in serving this great nation. Lord, we pray for those that are not with us today. We pray for those that will be traveling during this summer. So many things can happen, so many accidents and so on. We ask you, provide your guidance through your angels to protect them. We pray for those that are 
sick among us. We pray for Ryan. We lift him up to you, Ryan Blackwell. We lift up uh, um, Emily. Uh, we lift her up to you right now, Lord. We pray for these family, Perry. We lift her up to you. We lift up others. And Lord, we often pray for Charles' healing, but he finally got his healing in ways far greater than, than we can see him on this earth. So we pray now for, for, for those who grieve and mourn and of lost loved ones. We ask you to comfort them at this hour. Be with our nurses, our doctors. Be with our school officials. Be with our law enforcement. Be with our, our rescue team and our and, uh, fire department. Those that serve, volunteers, giving their time and effort. Because in their hearts, they were born to be servants. Lord, help us to learn from them. Help us to give freely in making our community, our neighborhood, a better place to live. And we thank you and we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand for the call of worship. This is my father's world. Father's world seated. And good morning again and welcome. Do we have any visitors with us here today? Uh, we do have a visitor here. I'm so pleased that my uh, son-in-law, excuse me, is here. We pray for him during his health problems and it's so good to have him here today. Amen. 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 Thank you and welcome, son. Welcome. welcome. Pleased to have you with us here today. Also, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please stand and uh, let's repeat the verse of the month. And that verse is Isaiah 26, verse 3. Let's repeat uh, together. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Amen. Amen. If you would please turn to your neighbor and pass the peace of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Be with you too.
How many have said, if I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't have any children? <laughs> I have. But I tell you what, my life wouldn't be complete without them. I love my girls. So this morning, let's uh, all sing and give some praises to the Lord with our praise team. Thank you. 
Now we welcome back from a long sabbatical, <laughs> who is all re rested and refreshed. He's going to bring us Christ this morning. Praise God. Good morning, everybody. All of our visitors and friends and our regular, it's so good to see you here today. You always here, whether it's Father's Day or not. Someone made a comparison, said Mother's Day, they want to be taken out to eat. Man's Day, what happened? We get on the grill. Yeah. Right, Brother Smith? We get on the grill. Kids come over and eat, and they leave. Leave us with all the dishes and all the trash. They eat, and they're gone. You know, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Yeah, I've had those experiences before. Can you help out? I got to go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Let me ask you a question this morning. What has God done for you this past week? What has he done for you this past week? What was that? He woke you up every day. He filled your cup. What has God, what was, he is with you. He is there to hear me. He gave us a great day yesterday to get out to. Gave you an opportunity to enjoy your community. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Can you see how many ways that God manifests himself? He's not just one single God in one role. He dispersed himself out and he shines in different ways so that we can get to know him. Yeah. That's what I get excited about. The Lord. I get excited about his mercy. I get excited about his grace because I'm so undeserving of it. And yet all I could do is say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to practice that throughout this week. No matter what you're going through, look towards the heavens and say, Lord, thank you. Try it and tell me the story afterwards, okay? Try it. Thank you. 
I want to turn this morning to the book of uh, Genesis. Genesis chapter 32, familiar scriptures that you have read and perhaps sermons that you have heard. But on this Father's Day, I want to visit this sermon, this text, and perhaps in some ways bring out some nuggets of life, life as it is. And I'm going to be reading from the uh, NIV version. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. Hang on to that phrase. He was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of his hips so that his hip was wrenched. And as he wrestled with the man, the man said, let me go for this daybreak. Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Mm. That's a mean guy there. Then the man asked him, what is your name? Jacob answered, Jacob, he answered. The man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have, listen to these words, you have struggled with God. Come on. You have struggled with God. You have held God accountable. See, we don't like to hear that kind of language when we talk about God, that we hold God accountable. But Jacob did. This man, this unknown assailant says, you have, you have uh, prevailed, you have wrestled with God. Because your name will no longer be Jacob, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Who overcomes God? Who overcomes the creator of the universe? Maybe God gives us a chance to wrestle with him. But we've been taught that we don't wrestle with God. We've been taught that we stay, we keep our distance. But God welcomes the fight. Did you hear that, Miss Kitty? God welcomes the challenge. We will never know what God is like unless we have a wrestling match with God. God welcomes the challenge. Let me finish reading this. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you want to ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. That was an old saying in those days. If anyone saw the face of God, they would not live. And Jacob said, I saw the face of God, and I'm still here to tell the story. The sun rose above him as he passed by Peniel and was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. I'm going to tell you something. I've had two hip replacements. I don't know if God would wrestle with me or he's trying to take one of them away. (laughs) I've had two of them boys. Now, the left one still gives me a lot of problems, okay? 
Now, I don't know if this is not the same thing as what Jacob went through here. Our scripture tells us that Jacob, while he was alone, after he had sent his family. By the way, let me give you a little background. This guy, Jacob, he was no good. He was a scoundrel. I'm serious. He, he was not a good guy. You wouldn't want to be around him because he was always dealing and wielding, and he'll get you in trouble, and he'll be set free. Jacob was not the nicest person. If you read back in his story, starting with the 25th chapter, how he swindled his brother, you saw out of his birthright, the poor guy was hungry. And what did Jacob do? He saw an opportunity to gain for himself. And he was already, when, when uh, uh, his mother, Rebecca, I believe it is, she uh, was pregnant with the twins. Esau came out first, but guess who was holding the heels of Esau? <laughs> he was, he had clapped his hands on his heel, signifying what? I want to be first. My God, I want to be first. And he learned a lot of his trickery from his mama. Yeah. Trickery family. Laban, Elizabeth, uh, 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 Rebecca come from a family of trickery. Everybody is swindling, dealing. And Jacob learned very well how to do that while he sat and was in the tent with his mom while Esau was out in the fields. Esau and I can identify with each other. He was a hunter. Yeah, he loved the wild. And he was a good cook, by the way. He knew how to cook venison. He knew how to cook different games. Because Scripture tells us that his father, Isaac, when he became real sick, he wanted one last meal, and that was tasty venison. And no one can make it like Esau. There are some people who can just cook. You can't replace them. But ever since that day, there was a struggle. He was cheated out of his birthright. And then that rascal, Jacob, disguised himself by putting on some, that, some wool, because Esau was a hairy kid. I mean, you, you touch him, you're like you're touching a wolf, okay? But he was a hairy guy. Jacob was not. Smooth skin, mama's boy. Yeah, he's mama's boy. It's all right to be a mama's boy. But he was no hunter. But he and his mama got together and they devised this plan that Jacob wanted to be first, and so he's already gotten the birthright. To top it off with, to receive the blessing. The father would lay hands on the top of the head and bless the firstborn. Jacob took that away from Esau. And that was rivalry. I'm going to get you, buddy. Somewhere down the line. And, and as you read those scriptures, you read the chapter about Jacob and Esau, you realize that uh, 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 Esau cried, cried, and he cried, and he begged his father, do you have one, just one blessing? I thank his father, as I recall, scripture gave him a blessing, but it never succeeded, superseded the one that he laid his hands on Jacob. Jacob was not a nice guy. He came out fighting, and therefore, up to this point, he still. Jacob, the scripture said that he was left alone after he had sent his family. He divided his family up, by the way. He knew that his brother with 400 soldiers was coming. He heard about him. They're coming to meet you, Jacob. 400. And he only had a couple of slaves and a couple of maids and servants, which were no match for 400. 
trained guys who lived in the desert. Jacob had a lot on his mind. He had a lot on his mind. He sent his family across and said, you, you go across, you divide, you go there, just in case if uh, his brother Esau would attack, they would be all scattered out. So he was a very clever guy. He knew how to protect himself and protect his, his interests. But here's the thing, the part that I like that stands out to me. In that first, in, in verse 22, that night, it said that after he had sent his family and they had dispersed them different places, verse 24, so Jacob was left all by himself. Jacob wrestled in the night all by himself. I wonder what that was like. What is it like to be by yourself and to listen to your thoughts and to regret, maybe even regret some of the things that you've done? He was scared. And he probably was trying to figure out ways that he could make amends with his brother that would spare his life and his, and, and his family. You know, we got a great God. <laughs> God takes ordinary human beings with a lot of problems. He loves problem children, by the way. If you got a problem child in your family, turn them over to God. I'm serious. God loved problem kids. You gotta, but you got to turn them over to him because he'll deal with them in a way that will bring honor and glory to himself. Where you and I want to give up on our children, where you and I want to give up on a person, God never gives up on us, even at our worst part of our lives. He certainly didn't give up on Jacob. He had a plan. He had already revealed himself in, in, in the staircase to heaven. That's what I call it. He had already revealed himself. But this is, mo this is the most crucial time of his life. Scripture tells us that, that tells us that while he was alone, a man, notice my sermon title is wrestling with God. And I'm going to tell you why I put that there. But Scripture doesn't tell us it was God. It does not say that was God. It says it was a man. Now, commentaries have depicted this man or this whatever this entity is, some spirit or some demonic force or some consciousness of Jacob that he wrestled with. Whatever it was, Scripture tells us that it was a man. But a man who could only wrestle at night. He won't wrestle during the day. I'll, listen, I'll say it this way. The, the battle of the wrestling match is not as intense in the day as it is at night. That's when you find what you're wrestling at night. When you're by yourself. It's a strange thing to look inside yourself at night. And this is what Jacob was faced with. This man attacked him during the night hours. Let me ask you a question. When are you most likely to have your struggles? During the night or during the day? Huh? Why the night time? Someone say you're tired. Why the night time? You're alone. Why the night time? Huh? It's dark. I don't like darkness, to be honest with you. When Deborah's not here, I have lights on all over the place in my house. I really, I don't like the darkness. I've always been afraid of the dark. So I have lamps everywhere. One here, one there. No, I'm just kidding, but I do have. I've always been a uh, uh, fear of the dark. When Pastor, how do you fear the dark? I grew up being afraid of the dark, okay? <laughs> 
We don't wrestle with things during the day as much as we do at the nighttime because it loses its power. Does that make any sense? The things at nighttime grips us. The things at nighttime causes us to sweat. The things at the nighttime cause us to be fearful. But in the daytime, it doesn't have that kind of same power. Perhaps this is why the man said to Jacob, let me go before daybreak. I can't get the best of you when daybreak. What happened when day breaks? We see. We're about our own business. We give no thought to God. We give no thought to, to what is right sometimes and what is wrong. We just live and we're just out there. But it's at nighttime where we're captured. We become prisoners of the darkness. And Jacob, for the first time of his life, he had never been alone. For the first time in his life, he always had others with him, wives and children and servants. But this time, he was alone by himself. And, and, and during that time, he wrestled with some unknown person who attacked him. I venture to say this morning, all of us are wrestling with something. Every human being is wrestling with something. They may look good. They may smell good. They may talk good. But every human creature created in the image of God on this earth is wrestling with something. And you are not alone. The man wrestled with Jacob. It was an intense fight, by the way. It was a physical fight. He, it was dark. Someone jumped him during the night. He didn't know who it was, but he wrestled. But he heard of this theory that if you ever get caught out in the desert and a person wrestling with you, hang on to it. Whoa. Now, that's different. Who wants to hang on to something that they're struggling with? Hang on to it. Because everybody don't get a chance to wrestle like this with this person. I'm heading to something. Y'all will catch it in a minute. This superhuman being that he wrestled with was an intense struggle. As I said, no one is exempt from the struggles of life. Sometime I ask a person, how are you doing? He'll reply, I'm, I'm above ground. Y'all heard that, right? Some of y'all, I heard some of y'all say I'm above ground. And sometimes I ask myself, so what do you mean by you're above ground? When I ask them what they mean by that, they say, oh, I'm alive. <laughs> I said, good. That means that you're still in the fight. <laughs> you're no longer in the fight when you die, okay? The battle is over. The wrestling match is over. Jacob wrestled with this person. He wrestled. He tussled. You know what? I really believe that many times our prayers are not answered because we don't get in a wrestling match with God. We read about God in the Bible. We hear televisions and preaching about God, but we never had a wrestling match with him. We never had a wrestle. We never came com a, a confrontation and, and confront God. I was talking with a, the gentleman the other day, and he was telling me that he was working. He's a carpenter, and some sawdust got in his eyes. He had eye washed and all of that. And everything he did, he did all he could to get that grain out of his eyes. He said, but nothing would work, and it was irritable throughout the day trying to work, but his eyes. 
So finally he said to himself, let me talk to God about this. Did y'all hear me? Let me take this wrestling match to God and see what he can do with it. He said, he just said a simple prayer. Lord, I got sawdust in my eyes and I can't get it out. I need your help. He said within less than five minutes, the irritation left, his eyes were cleared. Folks, sometime when you have a wrestling match with God, the benefit of it is a blessing. Oh, man, a blessing. But see, we don't see it like that. Whatever you might be going through today, there is a blessing behind it. I grew up in South Florida, and you can expect every noontime we are going to get a thunderstorm. You see the clouds coming. You know, you you know that it's gonna it's gonna rain and it's gonna rain for how long? Maybe about 30 minutes, and you know that. Then the sun comes out. Then we go about our business. But we know that rain is coming. The struggle in the night is what we fear the most. The struggle in the night is when we're alone by ourselves, when everything has settled down and our consciousness is wide awake, our spirits are open, the, 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 the invisible part of is exposed, and we're attacked by these different forces. Everyone struggles with something. Everyone wrestles with something. Now, here's another part I thought would be very interesting, because in verse 25 to 28, let me just repeat this just for a moment. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was rich, and as he wrestled with the man, the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. I can't be seen in the daylight. Almost remind me of those vampire movies I grew up with, you know, vampire movies. That boy could not be seen in the day. At night, he did all his damage, but you put him out there in the daylight, he burns up. That's what that, 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 that this came to my mind. I just thought I'd tell you that, you know. So <laughs> you might want to go and get you a vampire movie. The old days, them old ones, Boris Coffin, all them boys that used to make them old spooky ones, but they, they scared me. <laughs> But here, here's the thing. He said, let me go. Then he said, the man said, the man asked him, what is your name? What is your name? What is his name? What is his name? Jacob. Oh, no. Did you say Jacob? Ah, that's not a good name. But here's something that's very important about why this person asked him his name. Maybe for the very first time, Jacob was able to see himself as his name. His name means supplanter, means trickery, deceit. False, that's what his name stood for. Jacob the supplanter, he would trick you. Jacob, what is your name? What's your name? My name is Jacob. Here's the strange thing about that. Once Jacob said his name was, he revealed his name, this, this, this man did what? He changed his name and did what else? He blessed him. Why was that so important? Why was it so important that this person would want to know Jacob's name? Why was that so important? Because during those days, your name identified who you were in every facet of your life. 
Your name was you. You can't escape your name. You can't escape yourself. It was only when Jacob was able to reveal his true identity, he received the blessing, my friend. Here's another thing I noticed in that text. God did not attack Jacob for his character. Did you know that? God doesn't attack us for our character flaws. God already knows our character flaws. He already knows who we are. God is not in the business of pointing fingers and, and making us feel bad or feel guilty. God just wants to know our name. And if we can own up to our name, if we can own up to the person that we really are, the people that we really are in the darkness as well as in the day, that's when the blessings come, my friend. What is your name? My name is Jacob. What, so it means that God is going, to, and, 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 that, and, and this person says to Jacob, your name would no longer be Jacob. Be called what? Israel. Why is that so important? His name will be called Israel because now he would not only be uh, 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 by himself, but he would be the father of many nations, and his name would be a blessing to all generations of people are created on the face of the earth. You got a new name, buddy. As a child of God, when Christ comes into our lives, first of all, we have to identify ourselves in the presence of God as to who we really are. I'm a sinner. I'm a hater. I'm adulterous. I'm a liar. I'm a cheater. We have to name it before God so that he can bless us to be different. You can't change yourself. No person can change themselves no matter how much you read, no matter how much you read the Bible. Changing oneself has to do with the heart, and only God is the master of the heart. <laughs> we, we, we can't touch that. Only God has the scalpel that can reach into the soul of the heart and remove the things that are there that are disturbing your life. Jacob owned up to his own identity, and when he did, and I venture to say to you right now, that whatever you might be going through, going through whether it's worries, whether it's finance, whether it's a bad marriage, whether it's bad children, it doesn't matter. God has the power, and God is able to change that circumstances, but you got to give it to him, and you got to take your hands off of it. I remember one time I was looking for a job in Hartford, Connecticut, and it was a bad year that year. Job market was down, and people were not, getting, were not being hired, and when I came on the scene, they said, you're not going to get a job here, but you know what I told them? Let me talk to my Heavenly Father first. And see what he has to say about it. And sure enough, every day I would go out and look for a job. Come back blank, nothing. Every day. And one day I saw in the newspaper this, this guy wanted someone to make kitchen frames. I never worked with wood before. <laughs> but I said, you know what? I need a job. And I'm going to give it a try. I first went there, he looked at me, he said, who are you? I said, I'm coming to get this job about making kitchen frames. Huh? Excuse me, cabinet frames, thank you. My wife, well, so glad she's here. <laughs> Correct me. Anyway, making cabinet frames. Then he said, well, how long are you going to be in there? I said, I got about three months. He said, I can't use you. He said, I need someone long term. I need, I need someone who's going to be here. I said, I'll tell you what. Here's my number, and if you change your mind, give me a call. I told the boss that. He said, all right, I'll take it, but I'm not calling you. How discouraging that was. But I walked out, and I had a feeling. 
I had a feeling that something good was going to happen to me that day. I remember going downtown and I bought me this big old sub, riding on the bus, cook, smelling, everybody looking at me, one piece of it. <laughs> I finally told the bus driver, let me off to the nearest park so I can eat it in peace, which he did. I sat there under that tree and I was eating this big old sub and I was looking around and a thought came to me and God said to me, who created this world? I said, you did. Who created positions that men could have and, and women could have to live by? I said, you did. You see what I was doing? I was acknowledging that God has power to do as he pleased. I was acknowledging that everything that human beings have comes from God. And God was so happy. <laughs> he rewarded me. That same day, the guy said he was going to call me. He called me. Isn't God good? But you got to put him to the test sometimes. You got to tell God, hey, listen, I'm your servant. I'm your child. You promised to take care of me. You promised to provide for me. I need to hear from you. Sometimes you have to wrestle with God in that manner. You can't be, you can't be sly. You can't be timid. Scripture said, let us come, what? Boldly to the throne of grace that we may find grace to do what? Help us in the time of our needs. Let me get to the last point because it's Father's Day. In other words, uh, we done gone to the store and got exactly what we want. We're not shopping all day long, right? We're going right to the store, pick up the item, and going home. We're not going to delight the grill. We're not going to go and pick up stuff throughout the store and put it back down. Y'all, ladies, I'm, I'm not talking about y'all. <laughs> anyway, let me just get on, <laughs> because I don't want y'all to be mad with me at this sermon. Okay. <laughs> Here, here's this. This is what I want to say to you. The blessings comes through the struggle. People want blessings from God, but they don't want to go through anything to get it. The blessing comes sometimes through our failures. The blessing comes when there's no other way. We grow from our failures. We grow from our losses. We grow from, from our fear. We grow. The blessings come through the very thing that we are running from. The very thing that we are challenged with, that's where the blessing comes. There's a such thing as dark nights of the soul. The dark night of the soul is part of who we are. It will follow us all the days of our lives until we meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I remember hearing a story about a guy who needed some counseling. He had gone to several therapists. And every therapist, he was so cocky, he'll laugh at the therapist. Ha ha ha. You can't fix me. He'll go to another one. Ha ha ha. You can't fix me. Finally, he went to another therapist. He said, You can't fix me. And the therapist said, I know. I know I can't fix you. He said, Matter of fact, nobody can fix you. You're going to have to live with this dark cloud that's over your head for the rest of your life. That's what the therapist told him. No one had ever approached him and said those words to him, but they were therapeutic and they were changing. This is what happened to him. He left out of the therapist's office and he realized that he had this dark cloud. What he used to be depressed about he no longer was depressed. What he used to be worried about, he was no longer uh, worried about. Now, remember, the dark cloud is still there. What changed? What do you change? What do you think changed? Wait, wait. Go on. The way he looked at his situation is what changes you. 
Your circumstance may not change. Your sickness may not change. But the way you look at the problem can be transforming. You will change. You've heard men say, I want my wife to change. I want my husband to change. God don't answer them kind of prayers. Because God is only interested in changing you. Because if he can change you, what's going to happen to the missus? If he can change the missus, what do you think will happen to the husband? You see how God works? God works in mysterious ways. But here's the story that I close up. Jacob was a scrounger. But yet God loved him. I, 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 and you look at this text. God accepted Jacob. But he knew that there was more to Jacob's life than the way Jacob saw it and the way Jacob was living. He knew that there would be something great about Jacob. And Jacob but Jacob had to come and realize for himself through his relationship with the Lord. Same for you. You may be going through some trials and tribulations or things going to happen in your life, but I want you to know today, as the scripture says later on, the sun shine on Jacob. He got two broken hips. Well, I don't know about two. I don't want to got two broken. I, I got two broken hips. Let me, let me not lie on the scripture. Jacob, hip was taken out of socket, out of socket, and he never walked the same. When you stand before mighty God and whatever you're going through, you're going to walk with a limp. It may not be a physical limp, but you're going to walk with a spiritual limp, a limp that lets you know that you have changed. The situation, his brother Esau was still coming, <laughs> but he had a new outlook because he wrestled with God, and because he overpowered God, he was able to overpower who? His brother. He was no longer fearful of man because of the wrestling match. My friend, when you have an encounter with God, you gain strength. You gain confidence in who you are. You gain confidence in the God that you serve. You gain confidence in the thing that you say you can't do. You can do them. What a great God we serve, folks. He's not timid. He's waiting for the next wrestling match. Now, I ain't telling you to volunteer because I ain't volunteer to wrestle with God. I'm just telling you right now. If life circumstances present itself that I'm in the wrestling match, then that's where I go. But I ain't volunteering. In the military, they talk about guys volunteering to jump out of planes. Not Harrison. I, no, I'm, I'm scared to stand 10 feet and to jump out of a plane. No, 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 no. My commander would have to force me, Harrison, you're going to jump out of that plane. I would have jumped. Any volunteers? Not Harrison. <laughs> My friend, in closing, this is what I want to say. Jesus Christ says something. I am the light of the world. He that follows me, and following Jesus Christ doesn't mean that everything is going to go peachy cream. Following Jesus Christ doesn't mean that everything is going to go right. Following Jesus Christ doesn't mean that you're, going, you're not going to face darkness in your life. But what Jesus tells us in this text is, whosoever, for I am the light of the world, whosoever follow me will never walk in dark. In other words, he will always be with us. His light and his presence, no matter where we go, will always be with us in every situation of our life. His light will radiate in us and around us. Jacob said, the scripture said that Jacob, he named the place Peniel, meaning I have seen God face to face. Every experience you have, God is in it. Every sickness that you encounter, God is in it. Every loss that you encounter, God is right there. Why? Because that's the kind of God he is. And what is his purpose? To get us through it. To show us his glory. To show us our, his power. That we can trust him no matter what. What the situation. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word has revealed to us this morning 
that you are not a stagnant God just sitting there waiting for us to just bow down. You are actively involved in every decision of our lives. You are actively involved in the world decision. You are a God who is transforming those who are broke, those that are struggling, those that are weak, those that are hungry, those that are addicted to whatever it may be. You are transforming their lives, but first they must confess their name to you. Lord, Reach down and touch those in our presence today. Touch those that are listening to this message today. Touch them with a new transforming power that no matter what situation they're in, you, they can experience your healing touch. Thank you, Lord. We pray this prayer, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. If you are here today and something has troubled your heart, and God has touched you with this message today, will you come today and show Him? That God what is God is doing in your life. Time. Today, the altar is open. Sometimes all you have to do is say, eternal. or say rather, Love Lord have mercy on me. Maybe someone would like to get stronger in their faith by coming Holy, today. Holy, and realizing God Lord Almighty, God Almighty He's a powerful God. Would you give your life to Him today? Would you let him take your problems today? Would you let him take your concerns today? He is an awesome God. God loves his name. God honors his name. Would you trust God's name in your life? Thank you, Father. We are the broken. You are the healer. Notice those words. Jesus, Jesus Redeemer, Redeemer, mighty to save. Yes, you are yes, He's our love song. song. We'll sing yes, forever, we will. Bowing before you, blessing your name. Give Him praise right where you are today. Tell Him thank you. Holy, no matter what you're going through, say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the crowd. Thank you for the hard time. Thank you for the liberty. Who was slain? Highest praise honor and glory. Be unto your name. Be unto Today is your day. Say yes, Lord. If you already said, say thank you, Lord. Thank him right now. Give him praise right now where you are. Yes. What a great God. He's almighty today, Father. Thank him. Praise him. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Lord. I thank you for this problem. I thank you for this situation. It is God's name. He honors his name. Don't forget that. That's why Jesus says, in Jesus' name, ask anything in my name, and I will do it. Ask it in Jesus' name. Yes, thank you, Lord. What an awesome God we serve. You may be seated. But Dushers, please come forward, please. Now's the time to give back a portion of that that he so greatly deserves. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we give today our offerings to you, and we ask that you bless these offerings, Lord, and bless the giver, and use them to accomplish your will through this church and through the members of this church. Lord, we ask that the, every amount be invested 
in the furthering of your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As far as announcements this morning, again, we welcome you. Pleased to have you with us this morning. God has a way, and he brought you here with us to worship this yes, morning. Thank you. Latest group will be suspended until uh, the summer ends, and announcement will be made when that will begin again. If you have prayer requests, please see Wanda in the in the office or give her a buzz and she will place you on that uh, their prayer list. Deacons meeting this Tuesday is uh, at 6.30 in the conference room over in the office building. So all deacons please attend 6.30 this Tuesday. Bible study again will be postponed this month and we'll resume at the beginning of July and that time minor prophets will be the subject of our study. The almshouse, I won't go into all the details again, but you know that they are desperately in need, especially now that the children are out of school. Yes. So if you have things that, uh, that you can bring, please bring them and put them in the basket in the front of the church over there, and they will get to the, the almshouse. Baptism, if you require or request to be baptized, please see Pastor Harrison, and he will set up a a date and a time for you, and go through the things that, that will be required. If you have a, a, any type of a, a talent that you would like to offer to church, you're always welcome to offer your talents and, and provide any services that you can do. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, Pastor Harrison will deliver the benediction. Would you stand and receive the benediction? Listen to these words coming from 1 Timothy chapter 5. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Go in peace, and the God of peace will be with you. Have a wonderful Father's Day, Mother's Day, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> and have plenty of food. God bless you.